Good morning. My name is Dr. Alan Wong. I'm a plastic reconstructive surgeon as well as the director of lymphedema service in Sengkang General Hospital. Today, I'll be talking about lymphedema in breast cancer, what it is, how we can treat it, and more importantly, how we can prevent it. I'm also a member of the Lymphedema, lymphedema Society of Singapore. So you'll see some images from the society later. Today's uh, talk will involve the following topics. What is the lymphatic system? What is lymphedema in breast cancer? How do we treat lymphedema and can we prevent lymphedema? To begin, let's talk about the lymphatic system. What is the lymphatic system? It's a very complex system of multiple organs involving the spleen, the thymus, the tonsils, and more importantly, the lymph nodes. This whole entire system acts as a part of the immune system, allowing us to treat infection, to fight infection, and also to look for and kill cancer cells. So these lymph node basins contain various nodes in the body and helps to serve as a first line defense against uh, any threats. There's an estimated 500 to 600 lymph nodes in the entire body, but pertaining to this talk, we'll be focusing on the armpits because that's where the cancer from the breast will drain to. This is also called the X-ray lymph nodes. So in this area, in the armpit, it's a very complex, complicated system where it drains two main areas of the body. In this area, fluid or cancer cells from the breast drain towards the armpit. And at the same time, any fluid from the arm also drains back to the body via the armpit nodes. So in this triangle between the arms and the chest is where the lymph nodes can swell, can be infected, can you have cancer cells. And this is why this is why we have to counsel to look for the lymph nodes, whether they are involved in the situation of breast cancer. What's the relevance of this area in breast cancer treatment? So in modern days, we do what we call central lymph node biopsy. In this uh, uh, lymph node biopsy, we check whether the axillary nodes have cancer cells. If cancer cells are involved in this area, then we have to clear the entire uh, lymph node basin, the entire armpit of lymph nodes. This is to maximize patient survival as well as to decrease the spread of cancer. So in this case, if the central lymph node is positive, we will then proceed with axillary node clearance, which means to clear all the lymph nodes in the armpit so that the better, there's a better chance of survival for, for the patient and there's less risk of spread of cancer. So because we clear uh, all these lymph nodes in the armpit, there's always a risk of uh, what we call lymphedema. What is lymphedema? Lymphedema is defined as a collection of protein-rich fluid due to the disruption of lymphatic flow. And this disruption of lymphatic flow is what happens when we have to clear the lymph nodes in the armpit. This is a condition that is generally considered uh, uncurable. It will slowly progress with time. And as you see from the picture, the arm will accumulate fluid and it will get bigger and thicker. So as you can see, this is why it can happen in the arms because the armpit nodes are an interchange between the chest as well as the arm. And any disruption to this interchange will also cause influence also influence changes in the upper lip. So what are the rates of lymphedema? So generally speaking across the world, rates vary between any uh, all the studies. But there is a common consensus that in uh, central lymph node biopsy, it has the lowest risk of lymphedema, followed by X-ray clearance, and followed by X-ray clearance and radiotherapy, which has the highest rate of uh, lymphedema. So if you receive axillary clearance and you receive radiotherapy, at the same time, you will have a higher rate of lymphedema. A general estimate is about 13 to 52% will get it. And these are from various studies put together. And this is the risk that's quoted. Why do some patients get lymphedema and some don't? There's a theory that this is because some of the patients lack the accessory pathways, which are extra pathways for the fluid to flow back. This could be due to uh, the differences in the anatomy, or there can be high tumor load that has uh, caused a traffic jam within the lymphatic vessels. So within all these channels of fluid, if there's a lot of cancer cells, it can get jammed up, and that fluid cannot return back to the body well. And thus, this predisposes the patient to lymphatic dysfunction, 
which can then lead to lymphedema. So what does this mean to the patient? If you have uh, lymphedema, you will start off with stage 1 and you slowly get uh, worse as you can see. On the left, you can see stage 1 is the what we call uh, early lymphedema. There is some mouse swelling. It can be reduced by elevation of the involved arm or leg. And uh, slowly, over time, it will slowly progress as more and more fluid accumulates in the body. So in stage 2, the swelling becomes more evident. It becomes harder to reverse. Even if you elevate your arm or elevate your leg, you remain thickened, you remain big and uh, uncomfortable. And lastly, in the stages of lymphedema, the final stage is what we call elephantiasis, which you may be familiar with, the legs that look like an elephant's legs. So in such cases, there are very, uh, a lot of disruption to the soft tissue around the limb. So it results in skin changes and skin exploration, which you can see in the photo on the right. Uh, in such cases, it is very debilitating and it's difficult to live with this condition. And uh, in lymphedema, this is a general direction of uh, progression that we expect. Of course, it doesn't happen instantaneously. It doesn't even happen in the same year. It happens over many, 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 many years. To the patient, what would they feel? Some of the common uh, complaints that they have is that the lymphedema results in dry skin, in a very heavy arm, they may get episodes of cellulitis, which is like you see in a photo on the right, which is the red skin, and this is caused by infection. Because in cases of lymphedema, the local immunity is affected. Remember, we talked about how the lymphatic system is in charge of the immune system. So in the areas where they have been disrupted, the immunity is poor. So they are more likely to get infection, such as cellulitis, and commonly they require a short hospitalization with intravenous antibiotics to treat. And this can be very... Uh, disruptive to their lifestyle every year. Now, of course, definitely logistically, it's difficult to wear clothes when your arms are of different sizes. How do we diagnose this uh, condition? We have various scans uh, that we can use to diagnose uh, lymphedema. Uh, on the left is uh, lymphocytography, which is uh, we can check a special medication to have the uh, areas light up. You see how fast the water or the medicine goes to your uh, back to your body after injecting in the arm. And uh, in the center, we have uh, what we call ICG lymphocytography. Also the same, uh, we use another chemical to see how the body lights up. All the markings you see on the arm are uh, markings of how the lymphatics flow on the scan. So this is part of also how we plan for surgery to treat the patient. Uh, lastly, we have an uh, MRI scan uh, to uh, look for all these uh, deep lymphatics. And there's a more detailed study of the lymphatic system in the patient. So all these three are how we will use uh, special investigations to diagnose lymphedema in the patient. Next, I'll talk about the treatment options. Uh, the treatment options for lymphedema can be broadly classified into non-surgical and surgical. So firstly, in the surgical, not sorry, firstly in the non-surgical treatment, there's a combined congestive therapy and as well as uh, appropriate skin care. These two actually form the core of the treatment of lymphedema and uh, they are very important uh, that even if you should consider surgical treatment, we should at the same time also participate in this uh, decongestive therapy as well as appropriate skin care. Uh, a lot more information can be found on the lymphedema.sg if you're interested. So firstly, let's talk about the combined decongestive therapy. So what this entails is that uh, it is a uh, conservative treatment in which uh, occupational therapies or physiotherapies will help you to wrap and massage the limb. There are two separate phases. So in the first two weeks, there's what we call the decongestion phase. So this is intense uh, massage to massage the fluid back to the body, as well as to uh, wrap the patient with a uh, compression bandage every day. Then when the patient has, has successfully decreased the size of the limb, then we will go on to the maintenance phase, which is to uh, continue uh, regular massage at, uh, and compression bandage at a lower intensity. This uh, massage is comprised of manual limb drainage, which is basically using your hands to sweep the fluid back to the body. Compression therapy then maintains this phase because we cannot always be massaging our body. And so this compression therapy helps to constantly exert a pressure on the limb so that the fluid will constantly flow back to the body. The second step in the non-surgical treatment is to have 
good skin care. This is very important. As mentioned, the skin can get very dry. You need a moisturizer and moisturize your limbs every day to make sure that they don't become scaly, they don't crack, because all these small little cracks can be potential entry for infection. Patients should also have a daily inspection to look for injuries because you know we use our hands in our uh, daily activities. Sometimes we get small paper cuts, we don't realize it. So it's very important to look for injuries. And once we can we notice any injuries, we should treat it immediately. This is to prevent cellulitis, which was, uh, uh, can lead to entire uh, infection spreading up in the arm. Sometimes uh, we do give standby antibiotics because we do recognize that it, it takes time to go to the doctor, especially during this COVID period. Uh, there's a lot of fear of looking for doctors as well. So we do give our patients standby antibiotics in the sense that if they do get a cut and they're worried that if they get infected, they should start the antibiotics first. We buy some time until they book an appointment to see us. Of course, we recommend regular follow-up with plastic surgeons. In Sengkang, we have a lymphedema service. So we encourage our patients to follow up with our lymphedema service regularly. Next, after uh, talking about non-surgery treatment, I will talk about surgical treatment now. Uh, there are a few types of surgical treatment, as you can see. Firstly, there is uh, liposuction, which is to suck the unhealthy fat and fluid out of the body. Secondly, there is what we call lymphatic bypass, which is uh, in essentially what it does, it diverts the fluid from the lymphatic system to the venous system, which is your, where all your blood flows. What this does is that it bypass around the traffic jam in the armpit and then allows the fluid in the arm to go back via another, another route. Next, we have a vascularized lymph node transfer. This is uh, where we take lymph nodes from another part of your body where it's healthy and we transplant it back to the area where it's affected. So in the case of breast cancer, if the breast cancer is resulting from a lymph node dissection or the removal of lymph nodes in the armpit, we will then take a healthy lymph nodes from elsewhere, such as the neck, and transfer it to your armpit. So what this new lymph nodes does is that it acts like new seeds. It then sprouts uh, new water channels for the fluid to return to the body. It can be a very useful and powerful tool to uh, cure and treat, uh, so to treat this disease. In the uh, fourth method is uh, what we call excisional procedures. What this does is that sometimes we cut out part of the skin, part of the fat um, of the enlarged limb and then uh, we close it uh, to turn it into a, a smaller size up. So this is uh, essentially cutting out the un unnecessary fat and fluid. And uh, lastly, we can do a combination of any of the above as a uh, combination treatment does have a better outcome than just a new single modality of treatment. Let's talk about liposuction. So liposuction uh, is the removal of fat and uh, water of the lip through a suction cannula. So this is the same as what we do cosmetically uh, for cosmetic uh, liposuction. We use the same uh, device, we use the same uh, uh, solutions to uh, suck out all the unnecessary fat from the body. Of course, uh, this is done for a medical reason. This liposuction in this case is definitely very safe claimable because we are treating a disease that is uh, present due to the disruption of the limb nodes. So in such cases, uh, uh, liposuction can be used to uh, suck out everything that you don't want. And then uh, after it's done, we'll put on the compression bandage, compression garment to maintain the shape. So the problem with this uh, treatment is that sometimes you may have to wear the compression garment lifelong. And that is where it's very challenging to do in Singapore where the compression garment can get a bit hot. But this method is in, indeed effective. So uh, this is a, a study that was done that showed that the, it maintained the reduction of size for at least five years. Some has even gone for nine years. So liposuction is an effective tool, but it does require uh, the patient to comply with wearing of the pressure garment. Next, let's talk about lymphovenous anastomosis. Uh, this is what we call LVA. Uh, short. Uh, what this does is a lymphatic bypass. As mentioned, it bypasses the lymphatic uh, from what the water channels. It will bypass the veins, which is carries the blood. So from the water channel to the blood channel. What this does is that it allows the uh, lymphatic fluid to bypass the armpit nodes so that it can avoid the traffic jam and then go towards another system to train. Uh, this is done using what we call super microsurgery. 
uh, all the vessel size in this uh, procedure is less than one millimeter uh, thick. So it's actually very, very, very small and very, very, very complicated. So uh, image, uh, you can see the image also, the size of the surgery needle is smaller than the sesame seed. So this is to, to show the size of the lymphatics that we're dealing with. They are all actually very small and very difficult to treat. But uh, luckily in the modern times, we have uh, developed techniques to treat it with this uh, LVA successfully. So this is uh, uh, publications uh, uh, shown of uh, lymphatic. Uh, that's on the left, you can see the green arrow pointing to the lymphatic and the blue arrow pointing to the vein. You can see the dye inside the vessel because uh, that is how we identify the lymphatics. So we can show that it's flowing from the green arrow towards a blue arrow, showing that this LVA is successful. Uh, LVA can be effective in reducing, reducing the size of the lymphedema. However, uh, the, it is still not considered cured because there will still be some residual swelling. This is also another paper that shows the effective, effectiveness of LVA. So uh, uh, you can see that how uh, this patient has uh, reduced the size of upper limb after having the LVA done for her. Next, we'll talk about vascular lymph node transfer. Uh, in this uh, technique, what we do is to transfer fresh lymph nodes uh, from another location to the areas as needed. So in the case of breast cancer, it's often taken from the neck to the armpit. Of course, on the body, there's uh, many places to take lymph nodes. The other uh, places you can take the lymph nodes from include that of the groin, as well as that of the, within the abdomen, what we call the omentum. Uh, this will allow us to have uh, donor sites that are more hidden. So basically what happens is that these uh, lymph nodes are transferred to the armpit area and the arteries and veins are reconnected so that the lymph nodes can be kept alive. Being, uh, these lymph nodes being alive will then continue to grow and uh, sprout new lymphatics to reduce the water and swelling within the arm. Again, uh, this is uh, one of the papers that have shown effectiveness. This is a Japanese group that transferred the lymph nodes from the groin to the arm. You can see that there is a significant reduction afterwards. However, as mentioned, there will always be some residual swelling because uh, lymphedema is uh, treatable, but it's generally not curable. Lastly, we have uh, excisional procedures in which we uh, cut out the uh, tissue that uh, is uh, fluid lock, that is uh, swollen, and then we close it together so that the limb ultimately becomes smaller. This is commonly more done in the lower legs, lower limbs, because uh, um, there uh, can be well hidden under trousers. Uh, this is not done for arms mostly because it can be very swimming and most people do not want to go along, go around their daily life with their arms looking disfigured. So it is an option, but most of the time this is not taken. Now, go to the more important part is, can we prevent infinite then You can see from the treatment uh, processes that it's uh, very complicated, very complex, and uh, a lot of times we can only uh, make it better, but not uh, remove it entirely. Hence, uh, the, the, right now, the importance is placed on prevention of lymphedema instead. So, the, quite, the quick answer to this question is, can we prevent lymphedema? Is that, yes, we can. There are new surgical procedures to prevent lymphedema. So, this is prevention technique is what we call uh, prophylactic lymphatic LVA. Uh, in this process, uh, uh, the lymphovenous anastomosis is done at the same time as the breast cancer surgery. The approach, this approach is called uh, LIMFA for short, which is lymphatic microsurgical preventive healing approach. What it does is that it uh, uh, helps to prevent the lymphedema from developing by first doing an LVA before the lymphedema even develops. So the LVA is a lymphatic bypass. Uh, it's done at the same time as breast cancer surgery and it has significantly reduced the risk of developing lymphedema. So the image on the right, uh, you can see that the the breast tissue is uh, shown by uh, yellow lines as, and uh, blue lines denote that of the upper limb. So what happens in the right side of the photo is that uh, the blue, the light blue lymphatics are joined to the veins so that the fluid from the arm can go towards the body, bypassing the entire area where the lymph nodes were taken. The goals of this uh, prophylactic LVA is to first prevent lymphedema Second, do it uh, in a manner that is safe and prevent the recurrence of cancer. 
uh, we do it only on the upper limb so that uh, it do not disrupt uh, or increase the chances of spread of cancer. Number three, we the aim of this LV is also to include and improve the local immunity of the upper limb by preventing the arm from getting waterlogged. And lastly, it helps to mitigate the progression of uh, uncurable disease or that is uh, lymphedema. So uh, this is enlarged pictures, as mentioned, uh, uh, the lymph nodes, after having been removed by the breast surgeon, the plastic surgeon will then come in to help join the lymphatics to the vein. Uh, this is uh, seen in this circle. This is where the LVS take place and uh, it helps to rejoin the water channels of the arm back to that of the main body so that there will not be a waterlogged state in the upper lip. So in this study uh, in Italy, it showed that uh, uh, out of 74 patients, eight patients had temporary, temporary swelling and then out of which only three had permanent lymphedema. And uh, long-term follow-up showed that this uh, prevention is still working. So what essentially what this means is that the risk of lymphedema after having done this procedure would decrease to only 4% from the common pool of 15 to 50%. So this is a significant reduction, especially in the case of this uh, uncurable disease, which is lymphedema. Prevention is definitely better than cure. So in this uh, in the study, they also showed that uh, volume of the arm, which is the size of the arm, is improved uh, month, like every month. And then after that, annually measured is also maintained. So this improvement is long-term and it's not just a short-term uh, treatment. This prevention actually does help to prevent lymphedema in long-term, at least four years and above. So uh, this is the table to show the comparison rate. So let us assume that in a patient with uh, armpit dissection, X-ray dissection, there's a lymphedema rate of 13 to 65%. Then in a case, if you do a prophylactic lymphatic lymphovenous anastomosis, you actually drop this down to 4%. So this is actually quite a significant drop uh, uh, and uh, it is, uh, will have direct impact on the patient's recovery. There are also a lot of economic savings if you do preventive uh, surgery to prevent lymphedema. Although we don't have any uh, statistics from uh, Singapore, this is uh, USA statistics. Uh, it does show a significant uh, improvement in terms of economic uh, cost. Uh, if you were to do a prophylactic LVA, they estimated that the cost is about six thousand US dollars. But if you were not to have LVA, if you avoided doing LVA and and uh, end up with lymphedema, you will actually have about you actually pay twice that amount of uh, price in a lifetime. And so and so it shows that there is significant uh, savings in preventing lymphedema. Because as mentioned, lymphedema is a chronic disease, it will not uh, recover and you will have to deal with it constantly through your life. Uh, recently this year as well, in April, uh, the American Association of Plastic Surgeons have also uh, uh, came up with a consensus statement, which is a statement which multiple surgeons have agreed upon, is that prophylactic lymphovenous bypass uh, does reduce uh, lymphedema in patients who receive uh, lymph node clearance. So to summarize, there is always a significant risk of lymphedema after X-ray node clearance. There are many treatment methods to treat lymphedema, uh, but it's difficult to cure lymphedema. Hence, uh, the modern focus is now on prevention of lymphedema uh, in a disease that is difficult to cure. Prevention is definitely more desirable. And in this case, a uh, prophylactic army does help to prevent lymphedema. Uh, if you have any more uh, questions or uh, uh, queries, I'm happy to take them. Uh, there's also additional resources at uh, www.lymphedema.sg where you can have uh, more information on the website as well. Thank you so much.